When Sophie Ding and Ben Meng had their first child, juggling full-time work and childcare with no extended family around was a challenge. So when they had their second child, they decided to send her to their home province of Sichuan in China to be cared for by her grandparents. I cried really bad at the airport after she left. Not sure what's going to happen to her. But it was a decision she says she had to make, given her full-time job and her desire based on cultural tradition to have family look after her children. It is very expensive to live here. And we have mortgages, we have daycare fees, we have a lot of things to pay. Despite being 9,000 kilometres away, the couple stays connected with their one-year-old daughter, Valerie. Da, da. Da. They aren't the only ones to send their child abroad to stay with family temporarily. A University of Notre Dame report has found several cases of so-called satellite babies in Sydney's Chinese migrant community. It says children are most commonly separated from their parents between the ages of zero to five and spend an average 20 months overseas. They might not have access to government subsidised childcare for on a temporary visa. Cost of living is really getting pretty serious in cities like Melbourne and Sydney. But there's a cultural component to it as well. So this is common in cultures where three generation care models are really common. Migrant advocates are urging the government to make capital cities more affordable to live in, especially ethnically diverse areas. They're also calling for visa rules to be relaxed to make it easier for grandparents to stay in Australia. I don't want to miss like watching her growing up and start to speak and learning and everything because I already missed her first few steps. She started walking when she was in China. The family is looking forward to making new memories when Valerie returns home in time for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs>